Hey, it is Keith. I'm back again with another beach volleyball news report. On this beautiful day, I'm outside. Yes, <laughs> haven't been outside in a long time because we had such a long, cold winter. But I'm back, and I want to talk about beach volleyball rental facilities. Well, not just beach volleyball, indoor rental facilities too. It's a serious topic, and I hope facility owners and managers, whoever, will get to see this video and hear what I have to say because it's important. It, it's something they probably haven't thought about. And I really hope someday a recreational manager will see this. Oops, almost got bit by a bee there. <laughs> I mean a recreational facility like a community recreational center because they, they're they kind of off in a whole different world and um, yeah, and they probably won't even see this because they're not involved with volleyball and that's what I do. Okay, so that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, here's the scoop. I am a tournament organizer. If I had my way, I'd be running a volleyball tournament every Saturday and Sunday year-round if I could. What normally holds me back is I don't have my own facility. I don't have beach courts and I don't have access to an indoor court gym. So that means I have to go to an owner of these facilities or a manager and say, I'd like to book your volleyball courts. And that's kind of what holds me back. <sighs> But on the flip side, of course, any facility manager wants to rent their facility. They want their place full. And of course, the more people that use their facility, if it's full all the time, it means they make more money. It's that simple. So being empty doesn't help anybody. Most facilities rent out their courts by the hour, and it's per court per hour. And they usually want that money in advance. Okay, it's great. You're running out your courts per hour. Well, let's say you have a group of 12 friends. You say, let's play two hours of volleyball. You can contact a facility and say, do you have courts available? And if they do, you can say, we want two hours. We have the people. We have our friends. We can put up the money and bang, you, you have it. And this also works for community groups like a church group or even a business that say we want our employees to go out and play a couple hours of fun volleyball. And, you know, they know how many people they have and they have the money. So it's just an easy matter of booking the facility and paying for the courts per hour. It's that simple. Okay, so what about someone like me? I'm a tournament organizer. I want to run a big event on a weekend, a Saturday or Sunday, maybe both days if I can. I want to run something big, but I'm starting from scratch. There's just me. I have to go out and advertise. I have to start attracting teams, getting teams to pay me in advance and uh, add them onto the list. So I have to start where no one else does, which is zero at nothing. Okay, you do the math. Let's say the courts are $100 per hour per court. That means if I want to run a 10-hour tournament and they have 10 courts, you're talking $10,000. I have to come up with this money in advance, pay for the courts, and then pray to God that I get teams, that teams sign up. If not, I stand to lose a lot of money. So the end result with that is I am not going to take the chance. I'm not going to risk losing that kind of money. I'm not going to risk losing $5,000 and I'm not even a tenth. I'm not going to risk $1,000 to go out and try to book a gym or a beach court and then lose money because teams don't sign up. So the end result is I'm just not going to do it. I'm not even going to attempt to run a tournament at your facility because you're charging per hour. So like I said, the end result is there's no tournament, nobody gets to play volleyball, your facility is empty, nobody makes money, nobody wins. It's just a lose-lose situation because the rental system is per hour per court. Okay, for me to attract teams to a tournament, I have to book the facility first. I have to tell teams, here's where you're going to be playing on such and such a date. And then, of course, people start saying, let's get a team together, let's enter. So I don't know right off if I'm going to end up with two teams or five teams or 10 or 50. You just don't know because I'm a tournament organizer running a brand new event. It's not like I have a bunch of people all set to play because I don't. But I still want to run it and maybe, just maybe, I'll turn this into a really popular big event. Okay, let's face it, this is both the only way I can pull off running a big beach volleyball tournament from scratch, or an indoor tournament too. Put yourself in my shoes. I have to go out and actually advertise for teams. And if I'm paying $5,000 or $10,000 in advance and I only get 10 teams, I am freaking out. And I just, I just, I can't stand to lose that kind of money. So right from the start, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not gonna even attempt to run a tournament where I could lose that kind of money. So the end result, you're not getting anyone in your facility, nobody's playing volleyball, everyone loses. It's just not, it's a lose, lose, lose situation. So in conclusion, if you're a facility manager or an owner, I suggest having different types of structure for your rentals. Sure, 
per hour per court during the week or at weeknights, right, for leagues and stuff. But on weekends, when you want someone like me coming in to try to run a big tournament, then say, let's do a percentage. Let's split whatever profit you make, whatever number of teams you get, and at least you get something. At least they're teams at least trying to play. Because if you've got to come up and pack the place with 40, 50 teams from a first-time event, it might not happen. It probably won't happen. And, and I could stand to lose a lot of money, and I'm just not going to do it. Not even going to attempt it. So nobody's getting money. Players aren't playing. And your facility is sitting empty on a Saturday or Sunday when it could be making some money. And, of course, I don't mind if you make money from the bar or if you sell food. That can be all yours. I'm, I'm only looking to split the profits from the teams who enter, the entry fees. So that's all. That's all I'm asking. Make sure you have a different type of rental agreement for people like me, tournament organizers. And I'm running volleyball, but I'm sure there's, there's hockey, softball, you name it, all kinds of people that want to rent facilities and say, I, I just can't take the risk. It's too expensive for me to do it up front. Okay, that's it, that's all. Hope you have a great day like I am out here in the sun. And uh, consider what I talked about, these rental facility agreements, because it really holds me back from running tournaments where I could stand to lose a lot of money. I'm just not going to do it. But I'd love to run a tournament at your facility as long as you make the agreement good for both of us. That's it, that's all. <laughs> Bye for now.